<laughs> Somebody should clip it out, but they don't. Good afternoon and welcome to Apex Instant Tips coming to you live every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time. This is our 60th episode. I can't believe I got all that right. Normally Hayden does that. I don't, I don't prep for any of this. <laughs> um, as we mentioned last week, uh, Hayden is on vacation today. Hayden, um, as most of you have probably figured out by now, does all the work for the show and figures something out to say. Um, and I just come along for some com color commentary. Uh, but this week I've had to um, come up with more than that. And so I've invited Martin, a colleague of mine, uh, to provide some color commentary. Welcome, Martin, to the show. Hello. Hello, everybody. Um, and Martin, the reason I invited Martin is he's one of many people that had questions on last week's episode. Last week's episode was, um, I, in fact, I'm going to recap it really quickly so that we can get to Martin's question. And so just really quickly, um, if we share my screen, we talked about um, having the kind of thing where you have a list of values. Um, and in this case, we had physician list of values, and it was whether or not that physician is accepting new patients. In the list of values, we only want to show physicians that are accepting new patients. So what we've done is we've got a list of values, and we've added um, where accepting new patients equals Y. Um, and if they're not accepting new patients, I have a little message that says not accepting new patients. So, um, but, but our list of values is only going to show those patients that are new, accepting new patients. And the problem was that well, you see this 10 here because my actual page item has a select list and it has the display extra values, but that's ugly. So what we did was we talked really quickly about, well, you could say P5 phys physician ID um, here, but then it's no longer a shared list of values. Um, uh, but if we did that, it would work. So that's, that's it. If I do this and then I come back in here, it seems to work. I come in here. Um, but it's no longer a shared list of values. So Martin, what was your question regarding all of this? So an example we had last week is you were using a two char in the where ah, statement. Right. And the issue was with the two char was regarding performance. So the question I had for you is why don't we put the two number on the right side and remove the two char on the left side? Right. So in order to make this a, um, to make this a, shared list of values, um, we said you could use this apex dollar F1. Um, and, and Martin makes a great question. What, what, first of all, why did we do the two char at all? What's, what's, what was this all about? This is what we had was two char. Okay, so I want to try and spend five minutes to show you, there's a million in, in, intricacies. This could be an hour long session, but I'm going to try and talk about why one versus the other. So let's kick off the timer and we'll talk about what's going on here. So first, let me show um, what happens if I do two number instead of two char. Um, and what is even going on? Why do I need it at all? So I'll click the apply changes here. Um, and what happens is the apex dollar F1, the value of that bind variable, the value of the bind variable apex dollar F1 at the time that we first run the page is the, is the same as P5 position ID. But then when you go to start searching, it passes back what you've typed in. So if I type in Audet here, for example, um, and then I come back here, I'm getting invalid number for uh, HX. So what it's got is Audet has come back into this. And because you can't do two number on Audet without getting an error, we said, well, okay, you can do a two char here and you can compare it. But that's, that's really not a great answer because like you said, you could have uh, an, your index doesn't work. You've got to do all kinds of things to do this. So I'll be honest, I don't even love the whole Apex dollar F1 thing for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, it can work and you, you do need to figure out a way to get your performance. But I want to talk about what's going on underneath the covers. Why is all of this, what's going on exactly? If we switch back to this, for example, and we say, physician ID, okay, it's no longer a shared LOV. I get that. But there's some other interesting things that, that happen. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to do this. 
So I've got Carlotta, this looks like it's working the way I want it to, but if I look for this same physician, Carlotta. Why is it not display now? Yeah, what, what do you think? What, what's the reason it's not displaying now in my search? Any thoughts? Yeah. Hmm. Is it because of the condition in the work class? Ah, it, it is. It's saying that the condition has to equal P5 physician ID. But at this point, P5 physician ID is null because it's set to in memory only. So that, that physician ID is only set while you're rendering the page. If I flip this to per session disk, for example, then, and I redo this, now that that will actually show up and I can search by Carlota. And well, you can see already it's, it's showing up. So it, it has to do with what's in session state, what is available to the database at the time this is run. Um, so that's, that's really, maybe this, this almost looks like a solution. Um, I wanna point out there's a really weird scenario though. If you do this, if we open up two tabs at the same time, this, is, this looks just crazy, but okay, now we have two tabs on the same page. If I edit this user, Alvina Lucia, uh, Lucia, with this physician, and then I pick up a different one, this one with a different physician, now, oops, sorry, I picked the wrong thing. Uh, what's in session state, and in, in both tabs, what's in session state is this physician. So now, my, this physician won't show up in the list, but the other one does. It's, it's this funky set of what's going on in session state. So what's the real answer to, uh, to all of this? Well, honestly, I think the real answer is it's going to depend on your specific needs. Um, I would love to have a shared list of values where I can do this, where I can do exactly what we've got going on with P5 physician ID. Um, and do this instead. Um, but getting all of these things to work the way I want them to is potentially really hard. It, de it depends on what your use case is. Um, this one works pretty well, um, but what, what I'm really advocating for is that the Apex team gives us something to do like this. And this was Hayden's, um, Hayden's uh, requested new feature. If we can reference the value of whatever the item is that's being used in the select list, it would work not only for physician or for pop-up LOVs, but for select lists, radio groups, all of those kinds of things. Um, it's not so much a tip this week as it is a, a deeper dive into what session state is um, and into you know how it is the database works with these kinds of transitions. Um, so. Martin, that is a little bit of a boring tip this week, um, but we did do it in five minutes. Uh, and I really appreciate your, your question on this because it's one of those things that I think, I think you probably weren't the only one asking it. Um, so I have a wisdom of the week and actually I have an off topic tip as well. Um, and if anybody has questions, um, I'm happy to take comments as well. Um, and so I see Rich has a, a good question. Is the Apex dollar F1 actually document, documented or is it a hack? Uh, well, it's absolutely a hack. It's absolutely a hack. It's, I, I only found out about Apex dollar F1 um, by tracing the source. It's undocumented for sure. Um, but, um, but it actually is really useful in many scenarios. If you want to know what it is that the, that the user has typed in there, in, the, in that it, it works, it's worked for a long, long time. I don't think it's going to go away for pop-up LOVs, but it's definitely um, something that, that I would like to see, uh, that I would like to see a, another alternative. In fact, I'd like two things. I'd like the Apex dollar this, and also maybe some like Apex dollar search or something that, that, that gives you access to both the underlying value and the, um, the other. Um, so um, actually, I'm gonna jump onto that question in just a second. First, Martin, I've got, I do have a wisdom of the week this week I'm gonna, because it's related to what we just went through. Um, and that it, the wisdom of the week is be explicit. Uh, 
And this is true in so many cases. It's true whether you're documenting requirements or anything else. But in this particular case, what we were just talking about was this whole two car, two number thing. Um, anytime the database has to compare two data types that are not the same, a number to a character, those kinds of things, it's going to implicitly do a, either a two number or two, car, or two car. And you don't know which it's gonna do. One time it could do one, one with a different version of the database, it could do another. So anytime you allow the database to do an implicit um, conversion, you're running into a potential for problem. Do, Martin, have you ever run into this with date, dates, for example? I've run it with uh, a record over time. We'll do experiment where you may have a query that runs fine for like hours. And all of a sudden, Oracle <sighs> will do an experiment to try a different execution path. And all of a sudden, you have performance issue. Oh, so if you exactly are explicit, true. yeah. So if you are explicit, you kind of limit the world that the optimizer can explore. That's right. I think that's a, a good point that you, it's not just in Apex, it's anywhere in the yeah. database when you're writing something, if you're, if you're doing that, um, that being explicit is, you're, you're, you're going to, just like you said, limit the, the, the side effects that the database might yeah. choose from. Um, yeah. yeah, so there was a, another question. Can you have only one Apex dollar F1 in a query? The, when you're using pop-up LOVs, every pop-up LOV will always populate Apex dollar F1 with whatever the person has typed in. So in your, in your pop-up LOV, there's only one search bar. And that search bar will always have, it will always be Apex dollar F1. In every version of Apex that has pop-up LOVs, you know, that, and I anticipate that will go forward as well. But as um, Stefan has mentioned and others, Rich pointed out, it's undocumented, right? It's, uh, it's um, it works. I use it, honestly, I use it a lot um, for context, Oracle text searches, that kind of thing, but it is undocumented, but you'll always have only one. Um, and you can have, you can have 10 pop-up LOVs on a page and each one of those pop-up LOVs will still use Apex dollar F1. <clears throat> um, so I have one other, um, I have an off topic tip as well. And this is just, it's almost, uh, it's just barely a tip. I've just started using uh, something called tab nine. Martin, have you by chance heard of this thing? No, no, I've not heard of it. Tab nine is a plugin for IDEs. Um, and it is, you can plug it into Visual Code Studio and uh, other, other IDEs. <laughs> and depending on what version you get, I, I, I downloaded, I, I paid the $12, um, I got the pro version. I can train tab nine against my own code, code that I've written, and it then auto-completes based upon my code. So if I start typing um, in some debug dot, it's gonna know that I usually use in some debug dot message and it's gonna know the parameter lists that I usually put in. It auto completes huge chunks of code for me. Um, so just uh, something that people might find, uh, I guess, I don't know how off topic or on topic it is, but this thing tab nine has an, an AI engine that is trainable against your own code. It's it's pretty pretty slick. It it's not free, but it's uh it's kind of fun to use. So yeah, yeah, sounds interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure that um, our audience can't wait to have Hayden back next week uh, because um, I am certainly not the star of putting the show together. But for all of you that. Uh, um, well, do all the things that we always say to do, right? Like, subscribe, send a letter to your parents. Uh, and thank you, Martin, for joining. Thanks for thank everybody, you, everybody else as well. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.